your time is running out. But don't worry, you're not the only one. Everyone has an appointment with the Reaper, and it's never him that shows up late. Billions have come before you. Trillions will follow. But when your turn comes, whether your hourglass contains beaches or a sandpit, how should you face your death? Life was once cheap. The high chance of one's sudden departure to war, famine, disease or accident kept people's eyes on their mortality. Poor Romans contributed to burial funds, and pregnant women celebrated by writing their wills, just in case. With death everywhere, everyone knew the importance of being prepared, ensuring your wishes were met, and giving those left behind time to grieve. But today, over half of British adults don't have a will, and over 5 million of us aren't even sure how to make one. This risks leaving loved ones to deal with the outdated rules of intestacy, which overlook unmarried partners and stepchildren, potentially compounding their grief. This is a fate easily avoided. If you have anything of value, want to say in what happens to your remains, or want to name a legal guardian for your children in the event of your death, you should write a will. You don't need a solicitor to help you write it, but you should absolutely get one. This will help you avoid costly mistakes, and ensure you only pay as much inheritance tax as you need to. And if things go wrong, and you made your will with a solicitor, your relatives will be able to complain to the Ombudsman. Your solicitor will need to know the value of your estate, with your house, car, cryptocurrencies and any other assets considered against your debts, mortgages, loans and overdrafts. Also, approach people you trust to be your executors. They will ensure your will is carried out after you're gone, and this job can be carried out by a public servant, if there's nobody else you trust. Once your will is written, keep it in a secure place at home, pay a solicitor to register and store it, or register it through the National Will Register. If you get married after writing it, it will become invalid, and you will need to write another. If keeping it at home, it's best to store it somewhere fireproof, and it's a good idea to keep it with other documents your relatives will need in the event of your death. Insurance and pension policies, deeds, contact details for your solicitor and the executors of your will, and bank account details. And don't forget to let someone know how to access it. Alongside a will, you can write a letter of wishes. This document is not legally binding, but you can use it to explain what kind of funeral services you'd like, and how you want your children to be raised. Making these choices in advance prevents your loved ones from having to guess at your wishes after you're gone. Many young people don't have life insurance, but in the event of your death, having it helps secure the financial well-being of any partners or children you leave behind, ensuring they don't need to worry about meeting mortgage or rent payments. A financial advisor can help you decide what kind of cover you need if you're uncertain. Having conversations with your loved ones about the financial sides of your death and the arrangements you've made may feel awkward, but ensuring the financial stability of those you leave behind is an act of love. You will have a legacy. Nobody touches this world, even for the briefest time, without affecting it in some way. The longer you've lived, and the more you've done, the further the effects of your life will ripple, and even when your name is forgotten, there will be a million little ways in which the world would not be the same had you not lived in it. But if you feel you have not done enough, leaving your body to science and donating your organs are two ways to have a positive post-mortem impact on the world which will be felt for years to come. The lives of those you save, and everything they have the opportunity to do with them because of your donation, will be a direct result of you having lived. But perhaps that is not enough for you. In the Middle Ages, people left money to the church to ensure their names would be written on the bead roll, keeping their names on the tongues of future generations who would pray for their souls, they hoped, until their resurrection. And on a parish register in Cornwall is written, Elizabeth Stephen, 1732 of Zenor, here do write, 
when this you see, remember me, when I am out of sight. Whilst leaving money to the church and defacing public documents are no longer likely to achieve your goal, there are other ways to give your name a good chance of living on. You could set up a charity or trust in your name to help the causes you believe in when you're gone. Or, if you've experienced a particular historical moment, whether you lived through World War II or wish to record your time as a civil servant during the Brexit era, you could write your memoirs, either by yourself or by hiring a ghostwriter to help you. You may not believe your life is very interesting, but your future family members very likely will. After all, if you discovered your eight times great-grandfather had left a memoir of his life as a coal miner in the 19th century, you'd probably want to read it. But regardless of big gestures, your legacy will be built upon the things you do every day. If you choose to be kind, patient and loving, that is likely how you will be remembered. If you choose to be cruel, thoughtless and spiteful, then that is what you will leave behind. It is never too early to start building your legacy. You will begin to feel tired. Sleeping will help initially, but it will gradually become less effective. In your final days, you will begin to dip in and out of consciousness, sometimes waking up to talk to those around you. Eventually, you will fall unconscious for the last time. Your body will begin to shut down. Your breathing will cycle between fast and slow, and in a moment of slow breathing, one breath will not be followed by another. Peacefully and painlessly, you will have died. But you have some decisions to make before then. To start with, put some thought into how you want to say goodbye. You have lots of options. The Swan Song Project helps dying people record a song to leave for their loved ones. What the song is about is up to you, and many find that putting their life into song form gives them a different and helpful new perspective. Or perhaps you'd prefer to write a goodbye letter to friends and family. Whether it's just a few sentences or something longer, a goodbye letter can both give you the time to choose the right words and be therapeutic. And it needn't be a letter. Recording your voice gives your loved ones the chance to hear you again after you're gone. Perhaps you want to leave a recording to your children or spouse to let them know you love them. Or maybe you'd just like to leave an authentic recording of an everyday conversation. Perhaps by leaving the recorder on the table whilst you have dinner with your family. Remember to send the recording to those you want to have it whilst you're still able to. Alternatively, the Digital Legacy Association can also help you ensure your final wishes for your digital assets are met. And companies like My Wishes can help you leave goodbye messages that are posted to social media accounts after your death, just like the author Terry Pratchett did when his assistant posted a series of tweets after he died, in which one of his characters, Death, took him beyond the realm of the living. And what about the moment of death itself? Where do you want to die? At home, or are you willing to move into a place of care? Medications that take away your pain may make you drowsy, so do you want the priority to be on your comfort or your lucidity? Do you want to live as long as possible regardless of how invasive the treatments are, or would you accept a shorter life for more comfort? Are there any spiritual or other practices you want to carry on for as long as possible? Do you want your deathbed surrounded by pictures of loved ones or cuddly toys? What music, if any, do you want to listen to? It's important to make sure those you've invested with the power to make decisions for you are aware of your wishes on these subjects and anything else that is likely to come up in regards to your final months. And finally, there is afterwards. There is only one necessity. You must be buried or cremated. And even then, there is room for creativity. For as little as £495, you can have Aura Flight send your ashes into space. Or perhaps you'd like to be buried at sea, which is possible with the correct license and preparation. It's worth thoroughly researching your options and making sure what you want is legal and possible. As for the rest of your funeral, that's up to you. You don't need to be embalmed, you don't need a hearse to transport your remains. Why even wait until you're dead? And no, I'm not suggesting getting buried alive. Live funerals have been on the rise in the UK because, after all, you can't hear all those nice things people have to say about you if you're already dead. 
and if all your friends and loved ones are going together to say a final goodbye, wouldn't it be nice if you could say it back? What about after you're dead? Well, beyond the necessity of burial or cremation, you have nearly infinite choice. It is completely valid to be strapped to the roof of a bright orange Mini Cooper and taken to a funeral in which everyone wears pink and the only available food is sour cream and onion Pringles. What you choose depends on what you want and your budget. Talking of budget, the average cost of a basic funeral is around £4,000. This can be a lot of money, but if you find yourself struggling to afford it, there are ways to get help. If you receive certain benefits and have a low income, you may be able to get a funeral payment from the government. Quaker Social Action can also provide assistance, as can the Muslim Burial Fund for Muslims and the Children's Funeral Fund for parents who've lost children under 18, provided the funeral takes place in England. When it comes to funerals, you have a lot of options, and while some things our ancestors practiced are not available to us now, sky burials for example are on iffy legal grounds, it is important to explore your options so you have the best chance of leaving this world the way you want. After all, when it comes to dying, nobody gets a second chance to do it right. And so, finally, you will be dead. Hopefully, the afterlife is however you imagined it to be, and if not, at least you can rest assured that you were ready for it, that your death did not result in the financial ruin of your loved ones, that those you cared for were left space to grieve by the assurance that you already had the big decisions sorted out, that you said goodbye the way you wanted, leaving a legacy as good as you could make it, and that your remains are now resting in whichever way match with your wishes. Whether your ashes have been sent into space, or you had somebody dig a pit in a forest and throw you in, congratulations, you have died well. If you want to support the channel, come join us in our Patreon Discord server and see videos a few days earlier than most, check out my Patreon in the description below. See you next time.